Greetings, Matt and RC with you, and today I'm going to take you through a brief review of Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Uh, this movie stars Steve Carroll and Kara Knightley uh, in a film that's kind of interesting, kind of hard to pin down. It's a romantic comedy, basically what you think. There's a giant meteor that's coming to hit the Earth, and society, humanity, has only about three weeks left. And in the middle of all of this, you have Steve Carroll, who works as an insurance uh, salesman or an adjuster. And uh, let's just say he works in the insurance industry, we'll put it that way. And his wife, upon learning that the Earth is going to come to a very swift conclusion, literally runs out of her car, runs off to go and have a good time, and leaving Steve Carroll, they're kind of going, okay, what's next? Carroll's a dull guy. He lives uh, to seek solitude, but he also lives to seek um, a very simple way of life. He's looking for stability, and so all of his choices have revolved around that. Kira Knightley plays a neighbor. They have not uh, seen each other uh, ever. They've lived in the same building for three years, and uh, it was mentioned in the movie, they've never met each other, and well, why does that happen? Well, as the world begins to come undone, as they realize that the Earth is going to end, these two people come together, and really there's two kind of separate stories here. One of them is that Steve Carroll wants to uh, hook up again with a girl that he knew that they uh, dated on and off for about 10 years before finally kind of giving it up. And uh, he receives a letter uh, in the mail saying, hey, I'm sorry and I want to see you again, that Kara Knightley is holding on to and hasn't realized that it's like the big letter that Carol's been waiting for. The other side story in this is that Kara Knightley wants to go and visit her parents uh, one last time and uh, she needs a plane together because now there's no planes operating because everyone's quit. And so the movie kind of goes down those two roads and there are some surprises and some weird things along the way and some genuinely funny parts of the film. But I felt that the film missed in a whole bunch of ways. You know, there are those columns, those pillars of great movie making. You've got story, you've got direction, you've got casting, music editing. And I felt like the story was only 101 minutes, I think, is what I have on my notes. And unfortunately, that's just not enough time for these two people to supposedly fall in love. Uh, there's just not enough time for them to do that. So I felt it was a big plot hole. I mean, who knows what's going to happen at the end of the world? Will people generally love each other? Will we even know what love is based on the, the events of, of the Earth ending? And it's kind of a hard thing to say. So but all I can state is that for, for in, a, in a story sense, it, it really lacks in that particular part. I think another part that the film you know, really bothers me is I don't like the chemistry between Carol and Knightley. Uh, Carol seems too old, Knightley seems too young. Uh, they're, you know, Knightley's a great actress. Steve Carroll, he's more like an Adam Sandler. He's, he's funny in funny roles. When it comes time for him to be serious, he just comes off as being dull, and I felt like the two of them didn't really work. Uh, we do see, I believe, a couple of cameos in here. I'm not sure if, if these two people are mentioned, so I won't say anything about the extra people that are in it. And the movie ends just as we expect it is. You know, the Earth comes to an end, and these two people are going to have to make a decision. Do they fall in love and spend the last few moments of their lives together, or do they go their separate ways, do what they've always done, and get what they've always gotten? I would say skip this film. Not really great. It'll be on my bottom list of the year. Uh, but believe me, nothing will be as bad as American Reunion or That's My Boy. If you got a choice between those three films and you got to see something this week or anytime soon, go see uh, End of the World. But I, I would really wait until you're, you're pretty far deep into your list to go and see it. If you are on Twitter, you can check me out at the address listed below. I also write for a couple of websites, sandwichjohnfilms.com. I also write for onepercase.net. We write about everything cool and everything awesome. Those two websites I'll be representing at Comic-Con this year, so I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks to John at Sandwich John Films for getting me the street cred for that. I also write for a website called highdefninja.com, where I do Blu-ray reviews on there. Hope you get a chance to check all that out, and this is Matt and RC. Peace!